frankly, I wanted to see uh, what kind of uh, understanding the Armenians have come to, you know, after so many things that we have gone through and so on. And uh, I also have a kind of a, uh, anxiety to tell them about what's going on in Turkey, which I, I don't think I, 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 I've done. Uh, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't the case anyway. I mean, we were talking about the Armenian case primarily. Uh, but uh, I am kind of disappointed. I want to see a kind of a more critical self-look you know, uh, in the Armenians. Uh, because, I mean, we cannot change the other very easily as long as we, do, we can change, I mean, it's not the same thing. We can change ourselves, you know, much more easily or it should be like that. You know, you keep... uh, and I said it in a very, very soft way, in fact. I mean, I said if Bosnia is a, is a you know, genocide, if, if Darfur is genocide, there is no way not to call 1915 a genocide. That, that was what I said. Was your comment based on the Pope's uh, use of the word? Well, was it well, the question was based time? on that. I mean, the, the question of the journalist was based on that. And not the end. Uh, I, I didn't resign. I, I was retired because of the age. You know, uh, it was beginning of March, and it was not news at that time. Well, now it's news <laughs> because of this. You know what I said regarding. Do the you government. expect any changes after the election? Not immediately, because uh, of course it depends on the result of the elections. No. But uh, how do you think the elections will work? That's that that, that no one knows. I mean, it's it's, it's so 50-50. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, because it all depends on whether the, the Kurdish party will get over the threshold or not, and they are already at 9.99.2, and the threshold is 10. So any time they can pass. And if they pass, of course, it will influence uh, the MPs, the number of MPs of AK Party. Then we will have a different kind of atmosphere. When uh, we speak about the election results, is it the presidential system being incorporated? Is that what? No, no, no. It's, it's just still parliamentary system. We need at least two or three years to go because we, we need a, a new constitution for that. And it will take time. We will we will be discussing the constitution for maybe at least two years. You know. What is one positive thing you can tell us about the future Turkish Armenian relationship? There must be something positive. I mean, when, when I look at the young generation on both sides, I'm positive. But, you know, I, when, I, when I'm looking at the sociology, I'm always positive. I mean, the, the politics lags behind, that's obvious, both in Armenia and in Turkey and everywhere else, maybe. And what would you like to tell Armenians who are listening to you? One small, well, simple message. <laughs> what would you like to tell them? Somebody would say, oh, Etienne, now we know who he is, how candid he is, how serious he is, how sincere he is. What would you like to tell them to bring a change in this future? Well, I, I think what I want to see in the young Armenians is more self-confidence. And such a self-confidence that, that will make it, it possible for them to take distance from their own discourse. That's it. What was your response to what uh, uh, Mahjubian Etienne uh, you know, had to say? I, I, I am very happy that he's here. He's a very significant figure in this whole story. Absolutely. An Armenian who is the chief advisor to the Prime Minister of Turkey, maybe just recently former chief advisor to the Prime Minister of Turkey, somebody who has been prepared to say that the events of 1915 were a genocide, which is a very courageous, honest thing to do. On the other hand, in this presentation, I thought many of the internal tensions that especially Armenians in Turkey feel, but also Turks in general feel, were exhibited. So there were a number of actual internal contradictions. Uh, and I think it's very important for us to hear those, to reflect on them, and to better understand the antagonist on the other side of the table. What is the next step? Well, the, the next step is uh, reconstructing history, uh, but not as written uh, in their history books, singular history books. Reconstructing history through the narratives of people at the time of the divergence. That Has a genocide taken place in Turkey? Look, uh, 
the genocide is not a technical term. It, it is a series of events, you know, like destruction in full or part of a people. Uh, and it was, of course. Uh, uh, giving harm to a people because they are them, meaning confiscation of their uh, properties. And also, transfer of their children uh, to another uh, uh, racial group or ethnic group or, or, or religious group. These are all happened. You see, technically, this has happened, but it's not enough. You see, this should be acknowledged by the people who are involved, you know, or Turkey. engaged. The Turkish people, the Kurdish people, the Kurds acknowledge their mm -hmm. negative mm -hmm. role. Mm -hmm. Not in these events. Do you think Turkey will acknowledge it one day? <laughs> Sooner or later. Sooner or later. <laughs> it's a lot of happy talk and wishful thinking. And we should be steely eyed and evaluating Turkey for what it is, not how we want it to be. And Turkey is moving away from genocide recognition, it's moving away from its obligations as a NATO ally, it's moving away from the West. The only way to provoke a change in Turkey is to be honest and transparent. Tell the Turks what we think, what we expect, and to push them in that direction. Don't you? The way you start by doing that is on April 24th, having the President of the United States make a statement acknowledging the events of genocide. But don't you think it can't have a point that Armenians are, have to be more focused, must really be clear about what they want? I think Armenians are very clear about what they want. They want uh, to normalize relations, to open the border for normal travel and trade, and to have the Turkish government accept that the events were genocide. We are at a low point in Turkish Armenian okay. reconciliation, and everything is trending in the wrong direction in Turkey. The only way to reverse that is to shake things up. What uh, Pope Francis did was speak truth to power. I expect the President of the United States should be able to do the same thing. But in more practical terms, what can Turkey and Armenia do to continue talk, to continue the they, talking? They can open their border, they can uh, put signatures, they can uh, authorize the signatures on the protocols. It doesn't require a parliamentary authorization. It can be done through executive order. If Erdogan is serious about having better relations with Armenia, it's entirely within his power to do so. He might want to wait till after the elections of June 7, but time for waiting is over. Was Turkey right in uh, con conditioning the talks with Armenia to situation in Azerbaijan? Of course not. The talks had nothing to do with Armenia. There's no mention of Azerbaijan in the document or the annex. They didn't negotiate in good faith by going to Baku and trying to link the resolution of uh, Borno Karabakh with the protocols, they violated a fundamental precept in the agreement. It's a bilateral agreement only.